Hello there, this is C-A-N by E-N Kinnon from Kinnon Place and today we can play part 10 of Baruku Girls. Alright, let's just continue. Click on this. And yeah, alright, we can find out what voice it is. <coughs> the instant this voice was heard, we all jumped in surprise, but unsurprisingly, the one who sent the most started. The most started was Liana, who again stumbled forward and hopefully her, her hips of family flash will not stumble against me again. Oh, but this time it was Asahi she crashed into with them collapsing into a heap. Leaving myself and Zen and the guard present free to look boldly about searching for the unexpected voice. Who said that Zara Is it is it is it is it, is it Don? The utterance of his of this name was followed by a female chuckle which allowed me to focus on the sauce. Oh 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 it's her, Zara. And sure enough, there was Zara perched on top of a nearby roof wearing an expression of sheer mischief. What are you doing here? I'm just here to tell you that if you've got any last minute preparation you need to take care of, I'll get working on them right now. Well, because while I was out in the forest, I spotted every duckling and the underworlders heading your way. From what I saw, they'll be here sometime after dark, naturally. The instant I heard this, I felt my heart fall in the pit of her stomach. As I realized that the time limit I had sensed had just been set in stone. And the mission objective of this game was apparently to survive against impossible odds without any cheat codes, some game guides, or bonus lives. Needs, need, need, needless to say, I wasn't terribly enthusiastic, but I was definitely more desperate. Well, are you gonna help us fight them? What are you kidding, Snot? This is none of our listeners. Even everybody in, in this village and everybody else who are the ones who got themselves into this mess when they let the underwater suckers them. Not my fault that their stupidity is going to get them turned to darkness. Even as my face fell somewhat, Liana and Asahi were getting themselves back to their feet. You're right in that we made a terrible mistake in letting the underwaters play us for fools. But even you and the rest of the lurkers have to understand what's at stake here. The Underworlders are enslaving us all, one village after another. Do you really think that they won't come for you and the other lurkers eventually? Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. Maybe they won't think us as lurkers. They won't think us lurkers are worth the effort of hunting down. But I do know that my odds of staying in the light are heck a lot of better if I keep my nose out of this mess and let you face the music for your own stupidity. If that's the case, why stick the nose into this at all? Why even bother coming here to warn us in the first place? That's easy, because I was bored, I was, I had nothing better to do. You know, I'm so bored I stick a grenade in, in between my, in my cleavage. I have, I have to admit, all of the things that Zara could have said, it was quite possibly one thing I would never have expected. And in retrospect, I don't think anything else she could have said would have made me any matter. Mm, maybe? You? You were bored? Sure, watching you morons doing things but prepare was really tedious so I went to... I... So I went noticed the ducklings on their way here. I figured I'll mention it to you. Maybe the threat of your imminent destruction would light a fire under your butt get you to actually take this mess you made seriously. No, I don't know for sure what exactly happened between these people and the Underworlders, but I saw what happened if they lose this war. Don't you mean when when they lose? And when and what are you going to do when these people are fighting for their lives? Just sitting around enjoying the show, maybe having a soda and a popcorn while you're at it? I don't think she knows what the soda and popcorn is. Well, I have no idea what a soda popcorn is exactly, but nothing wrong with me enjoying free entertainment. These words hit me like a punch in the gut. Well, sexy sexy. All I could think was about what I had seen during the underworld assault the previous night. The horrors of everyone that had been brutalized by the rampaging ducklings. The callousness displayed by the under under underworlders. The way that they had violated the village head, stealing away the things that had made her a person, not just a pawn of their cruelty. In the past, I watched an acts of cruelty in video games, 
and I don't like them and to hear this woman talking about the lives of these people as if they were nothing and that their suffering was just something to amuse herself with I guess you're right, the underworlders won't bother with you why should they when they you're already worse than they ever dream of being? There were several noises of no, 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 noises of surprise made at this point. No one was visibly more stunned than Zara herself, who looked at me with eyes filled with astonished shock. Wait, what did you just say? You hurt me? You staying out of this fight because you think you will lose is one thing. But if you can't honestly just sit there and calmly watch everybody in this get wiped out entertainment, then you're nothing but a cowardly, self-serving, manipulative piece of living garbage who doesn't give a shit. You calling me a coward? I was able to announce that I was calling her much worse than a coward when Zara reached into her bosom with, her, with both of his hands and brought a dozen of sticks of Denmark already littered before I could even fathom how in blazer she has been able to cram so much dynamite in there, true, let alone one where one got dynamite in this world to begin with, she tossed both handfuls at us, sending everybody with an ounce of sand scattering out of the way, which unfortunately didn't include me. Unfortunately, everyone else with less sense came running to my rescue. Clear out of the way! I just had enough time to look towards the source of the voice before Dawn ran into me at full speed and shoved me to the ground, interposing herself between me and the many sticks of dynamite. Bam! Moments before they exploded. Bang, bang into the room, man. Dawn! The blast was tremendous, even as the air filled with flames and destruction. Dawn opened her mouth and deeply inhaled, and to my amazement, the force of the blast rippled before spiraling into her open mouth. Whoa, Dawn is powerful, eh? From, for what I felt like an eternity, I just laid there watching as Dawn devoured the blast only to have a grace drawn from this spectacle to another. The bunny's ample breads giggled vigorously and then began to swell mightily as she continued to eat the explosion. Whoa! Green screen. Within seconds, the two mouths of family fresh burst free of their restraining fabric, welling into mountains, forcing Dawn to place her arm beneath them just to keep them supported as she drew the last breath of flame and smoke. Cough, that was a bit too spicy. Just as as I laid there, trying very hard not to stare at the largest sets of breasts I've ever seen in my life, I felt a pair of hands upon me. Takeshi, are you alright? Um, yeah, I mean, I've been in one piece anyway, but how did- and hey, where's Zara? Long gone, typical lurker scum. I don't didn't know if she was typical for a lurker, but given that she had just tried to blow up us up among other things, I wasn't going to disagree Zara being a scum. But as Asahi helped me up, my wandering eyes found something else to focus on. Or rather, two rather large somethings. Um, is Dawn that blast? Is she, you know, alright? Relax, this isn't the first time I've hit one of those Zara explosions. Actually, she might have done us a favor. With this extra energy I've absorbed, I have more to use later. As I turn to look at Dawn and the Titanic twins, she now crater, my brain apparently shut down. And. Boom. I honestly couldn't think straight as I looked at her, trying not to look at her burdens. That's weird. I mean, if you ate that energy, wouldn't it go to your stomach? What are you saying? That you want me to look fat? No, 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 of course not. I wasn't thinking. I just, um, um, that is, um, isn't it what, wouldn't you have trouble, you know, moving around like that with this huge stuff? For a little while, yeah, at least until I process the energy and the swelling goes down. Of course, if you if you wanted to, you can always lend me a hand, you know, help me support my babies. Mm, the left one seems much larger than the right one, as as if when we are facing her, of course. As Dawn held up her outstanding, out, outlandishly oversized assets to me, I felt my cheeks burn mightily. And they continued to do so even as Liana made her way over to the bunny girl and took off her coat. We have more important things to do than tease Taki. 
that said, Liana began wrapping her coat around Dong's chest like it was an oversized bra. Whatever her motives, Zara made it clear that we don't have long before the Underworlders attack. We need to be ready for the worst, and that means we don't have any time for your flirting. Zen, I'm sending a word to the rest of the guard, letting them know about Zara's morning. Get them ready for tonight. Whatever happens, we will not surrender to the darkness without a fight. Of course, of course. It was a noble settlement, one that I had heard many times in many different games. But as Liana aided Don in whittling off a top-heavy manner, I couldn't help but think about what Zara said, that our defeat was inevitable. And I have to admit, I have felt better if I could have been certain that she was wrong about that. Hmm, I wonder, I wonder. No, I don't think they will lose though, because if they lose, this game would continue. Uh -oh. Far too soon, it same night fell upon KH Village, and so did an oppressive mood of gloom. As I stood by the guard's arm with my pitiful sword and shield, I noted the fear of anxiety that permeated the people here. Everyone was clearly expecting the worst in the fight that was to come. As though she did her best to be encouraged in her, encouraging in her speech to her people, I have to admit that Liana's words betray her own fears. We all know what's coming from what we've heard the Underworlders and their Darklings army are marching towards this village as we speak. We don't know precisely how long we have or how many are coming towards us, but we do know that if we lose this fight, that it, it will be the end for us. Our minds, our heart, everything that makes us what we are will be gone and the Underworlders will likely have won. That there was a loud gapping in at this, I have to admit, I wasn't entirely sure that it wasn't me that made that noise. <laughs> I know that you all feel sorry for the Darklings and that you want to try to save them. Try to restore them to the people they once were, to be to the friends and neighbors we knew and cherished in the past. But the sad face that the sad fact is that we can't save them unless we are able to save ourselves. So I'm afraid that we must do whatever it takes to survive this onslaught. So please, don't hold back for their sakes. If any of us are to remain in the light, we must think of our own lives first and foremost, and hope that we may be forgiven for whatever we have to do this night. I knew what Liana had to say without actually speaking in words, so did everyone else there. And as her face fell in shame as the people around me shuffled nervously as soberly it hit me as never before that we each and every one of us was in a fight of our lives and if we lost we would die either in body or in mind and I have to admit I was once again wondering what in the blazes was taking my father so long to figure out what was wrong and pull me out of this mess only to shitter myself for wanting to run and leave these people to face their doom. As another section of my mind was wondering what a guy like me could contribute in this monstrous conflict, Liana focused against on me. Haki, I get you are a guest of this village, you can't hear me like the others can. And though I appreciate you offer to fighting alongside of us, I do feel it would be best if you were to remain close to someone who kept an eye out for you, relay any information or orders I have. Asahi, would you mind keeping an eye on him? Of course not, he's my little baby brother. I wish I could give you greater assurance, so I wish I could promise you that we will win this fight, but I can't. All I could do is vow that we will fight and we will we'll keep fighting as long as we can. And maybe, just maybe, the underworld of the family learn to respect the light. Report to your post, best of luck, you all, to you all. With that, everybody started moving, going about whatever orders they were given. As for me, Asahi gently wrapped her hands about my wrist and started leading me to the outer wall of the village. Whoa, this outer wall? There's some guards here. Took a sip of drink. All too soon, we were perched at the top of the wall looking out into the darkness, darkened forest that surrounded the village. Knowing full well that soon enough, doom and destruction will make its march towards us. So, I guess this is it, huh? The final battle? Looks that way. Look, I. I. Perhaps your father may still find you. Take you away from here. 
sorry, thanks, but anyway, I don't think I'll feel right just about you know living like that. Not when you and everyone else here is facing something like this. You're a good person, Taki. I wish I had more time to get to know you better. So do I, says Don. Asahi and I jumped at unexpected sound of Don's voice. As the two of us whipped about, we saw a bunny girl standing nearby with a cutesy poo expression on her face. Don, what are you doing here? I think Don is their most powerful we we weapon, you know? I think, I think. Waiting for Underworlders to come after us, same as you. But that doesn't mean I intend to spend the time being on Doom and Gloom, if you get my meaning. Don certainly was certainly skilled at killing moments that were certain, and she seemed determined to make sure that the mood was good and dead as she came closer and closer as she came closer and gloomed in front of me. Point point point. Oh, you do, you do feel nice, Taki. I wish I had time to take you for a ride. Back home, I might have spoken up in protest. No, 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 no. Actually, if, 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 if Don and Taki do anything here, can his father see? I wonder. But right now, in the face of an utter annihilation, all I could do was groan, feel my cheeks burn and Asahi groan in dismay, and watch and wait for the end to come. Also, this is um, something I knew I could never say to Asahi, but I had to admit to myself, Don felt, Don felt pretty good as well. <laughs> oh, he, this pervert. One of the nice things about these video games and movies is that they generally don't take place in real time. There are cutscenes dissolved and dissolves and tools for moving one scene to another so you don't spend too long. Boring hours watching characters wait for imminent doom and butt kicking they are they soon are to receive. But this but if this was a video game then I was on the wrong side of the screen, which meant I and everyone else was forced to endure a long grueling wait as we all peered into the darkness watching and waiting one and wondering when the end would come. Leaving us all to exchange either chat, glance about and make fearful jokes. In my case, having Don and Asahi huddled close to me in order to shave off a statue. Well, I think that's the best thing, right? Huddled close to you. Both of them have, have, have to put their hands here just to support those huge lump of feminine flesh. Okay, so maybe it wasn't all bad. True, I don't mind dying beside them too. But still, I wouldn't have to blame anybody for wanting the waiting to be over so we could get this nightmare over with one way or another. Me? I didn't feel that way because I had seen the end that we waited for us if we failed. And I was more happy to put that off as for as long as possible. Even waiting was a lot better than what I had seen the underworlders do. I think I heard something. I think I heard something. Which is why I really wish I de I hadn't heard it, but I had, and so had everyone else. In an instant, myself and everyone else stationed at the top of a wall were on full alert, eyes queued, and weapons at me ready. I didn't see anything at first, I didn't hear anything either, but nonetheless, you counted the word voices and rustling as the people around me ready their weapons, but then I heard something. A cruel chuckle, well, I like the flash. A cruel chuckle born of anticipation, one that caused me to flash back to the village I had seen being overwhelmed by every conceivable evil. And it was a chuckle that was soon followed by another and was echoed by more cruel sound and then... Over there! Alright guys, I think the battle is about to start but we are about to reach 20 minutes marks so we're gonna stop here. Thank you for watching with me part 10 of Baruku Ghost. And I'll see you in the next episode where the battle will begin. And hopefully it's not the final battle, right? Because mm, we don't even know much about this story yet. Alright, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next time. Goodbye! Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you get scared? Well, subscribe to my channel. And I promise you, you'll never get scared again. Or watch more videos. And you'll be able to find your peace in life.